you can use VLOOKUP to locate and correct missing data with an automatic error check of Excel VBA. Let me show you. Say you have a sheet that is called orders and every order is hooked up to a specific customer ID and that customer ID corresponds with the customer ID on another sheet that is called stores. So what are we going to do first to check whether all customer IDs exist? We make a copy of column A in column G but with no duplicates. So you will notice for instance that 6543 is missing here because we had that already in row 5. Then we are going to put next to that column G a column H that uses VLOOKUP to find whether there is an error when we look up the first number in the stores sheet. And it found that there was an error for ID 2500. So apparently 2500 exists here, but there is no store connected to it. So we, we let the VBA code find that and locate that 2500 and he said, we ask you what is the name of store 2500, let's say we, we call it ABC. And we are going to add that ABC and the number 2500 to the list of stores we, at the bottom and then we sort that list so it ends up in row 14. And then later on we add to the original list of orders in column F the names of the corresponding stores. And notice that the 2500 one that did not have a connection before now is hooked up to the store name ABC, ABC. The question is how can you have VBA Visual Basic do that? Let's create a subroutine or a macro, whatever you want to call it, and call it a VLOOKUP check or something similar. Don't forget your ends up. We declare two variables of the worksheet type and a, a counter of the long type or integer. But integer can only go to row 32,000 or so. I can go to 2.1 billion. And you may have many more rows in your database than 32,000. Set OWS orders of the worksheet type to the, the collection of worksheets, the one that is called orders. And set OWS stores to one of the, the worksheets, in specific the one that is called stores. I want you to know that that has also a range in it that is called stores, so I can use that range name later on. Activate OWS orders. Here is that, here is part of that database. We delete or clear anything that was put in there from previous actions. We clear it up. Then we take column one that is column A, and use an advanced filter that creates a copy of the filter and puts it in range G1 to begin with. And true means that we don't want duplicates, no duplicates set to true. And there is more coming. This was the end result. There are the duplicate numbers, the non-duplicate numbers, then you have to know how to use that VLOOKUP function. We are going to use the R1C1 notation to do so. Um, how does R1C1 work? Say you are in cell B11. B11 is not an R1C1 notation. In R1C1 it would be row 11, column 2. So if you want to use the R1C1 notation, how do you do it? R1C1 would mean takes 
the figure to something in row 1, column 1, which is cell A1. If you had chosen RC, then the result would be B11, for that means in the same row and the same column as where you are. If you are in B11, the same row and the same column would refer to cell B11. R bracket 1 close bracket C, that means one row down in the same column of B11, that is B12. The next one would be A10, one row up, one column to the left, reference from B11 would be A10. And finally, you can use that also in a formula, of course, sum R row 2, the same column as where we are, through R minus 1, that's one row up in the same column, so that is, you feel it coming, sum B2 through B10. Now that you know that, we can use that notation in our VLOOKUP subroutine. Let's declare a WIF statement, range G1, the current region, the current region, in this case of G1, is everything in column G that has numbers in it. Current region looks for empty columns to the left, empty columns to the right. There is nothing in H yet when we start this. We offset that current region by zero rows down, one column to the right. So that refers to that one. So we are going to put in there a formula of the R1C1 notation equals double quotes, and your double quotes, use the VLOOKUP function, looking in the same row as where we are, one column to the left, so in this cell it would look there, F look up that number in this, the named range stores, in column 1, and look for an exact match, false means accept, accept, if it can't find it, we want to find the is not available one, so that will say true or false. Then we loop through all the rows of range G1 current region, starting in row 2, and we end in the last row. What is the last row from the current region? The number of rows counting. Next I. If from that range G1, current region, dot cells, I, the first time it's 2, column 2, if that is true, in other words, if we find a true somewhere here, then end your if statement, go to the stores sheet, range A1, go to the end of that column with an Excel down command, offset it by one row more, so we are going to add one more row at the end in the same column, and we store in there the value of cells I1, that is 4904, 5994, 2559, So it added at the end 2500, if that's the number that was missing. And we store in the cell next to it. So that is offset 0, 1, column 1, input box. We ask the user, how do you want to name that 2500? I decided on ABC. And we are going to continue our subroutine. First we are going to sort the updated store list and rename it with a new range name, for the range is now one cell longer, one row longer. So we need to sort. We do this for OWS stores.range A1 and with sort that range based on OWS stores dot range A1, that is your sorting criterion, not column 2, not B1. And after a few more arguments, the last one Excel yes means that 
it does have a header. Otherwise you let Excel guess whether there is a header or not. And rename that current region now, which is one row longer, and call it stores again. Then we empty the temporary list of unique stores by talking to OWS orders this time, range G1, current region, clear that whole range. Add the correct store name to each order, again with a VLOOKUP, so we can really see that the names were found for those client IDs. We do that in the order sheet, range A1 current region again, and with. So we are now in this section, and we are going to put in there a new column, F. We go to the column, from the collection of columns that has the number columns count, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, plus 1 is 6, and put a formula R1C1 in there that says equals VLOOKUP. In the same row, one column to the right, in stores, find the answer in column 2, and look for an exact match. Let's test the code. We have a sheet orders and a sheet stores. Control shift V is the shortcut for the macro we just discussed. And it found already store number 2500. You said, how do you want to call that one? Let's call it ABC. And it finally added all the stores names by after adding ABC to the list. So we should find ABC somewhere here each time we see 2500. For this case, for instance, that is a 2500 order. And now it found ABC because in stores there is now a 2500 customer ID that you had added after finding that it was missing on the other sheet. So now, from now on, we know which store that is. So we, uh, we corrected an error on our sheet by using VBA code. Want to know probably much more about VBA? I developed for you an Excel 2007 VBA CD-ROM. It has three parts to it. Uh, it's all done in more than 1500 slides. And the things I just discussed in this video are in the chapters 12, 13, 14, and 15. But as you can see, there is much more there. If you want to order that CD-ROM, you can either go to MrExcel.com or Amazon.com and just type in my name, Gerard Verschuren, and it will show you all the CD-ROMs and books I developed for you to work with VBA.